Being a woodworker, you may encounter some rough sawn or some slab material. This can be very unstable and very uneven. So in this video, I detail how to make a shop made sled that's gonna make the process of flattening these things out very simple. This is a pretty easy build. It's two parallel surfaces that get clamped to any workbench and then a trough or a tray that the router slides upon that takes off material using a straight bit. As you can see, results look pretty good. But it has a trick up its sleeve. It's adjustable in height. Why would you want to adjust it so high in case you encounter those big slab pieces where you might need it? You can see here, I'm so pleased at how it flattened out this large piece. And when you're done with it, you just put it aside for the next time you need it. Well, if you want to see how I made this, stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. And again, we are working with Baltic Birch plywood, making strips as you've seen me do before, putting glue and brad nails together to make four of these strips in total. Using a 3 8 inch drill bit and a jigsaw, I'm gonna make a slot in these pieces. I'm gonna do this twice on two of these pieces. This slot is gonna be what's gonna make the jig actually adjustable in height. My first pass wasn't perfect, so I'm using the jigsaw to clean up the edges, and then I'm gonna break all the edges with some sanding. Using this slot as a reference, I make a mark on the pieces underneath and I drill out four holes near the top of each of these rails. Attaching them with the T-nuts, you can see here they're a little top heavy. So let's go back to the table saw, cut two strips, countersink those strips into the base of each of those rails. That way they have a nice firm footing and also clampable surfaces as well to the workbench. With the rails complete, it is time to turn our attention to the trough or the tray that the router is going to slide in. The first step is to make a custom router plate. I remove this one, I attach a basic square that I've drilled a one and seven eighths inch hole in. I mark out on the existing router plate where these holes need to be drilled. Go ahead and drill about halfway down with a half inch bit, finish it off with a quarter inch bit. And then I can then attach this plate back to the router as you see here. Using the dimensions of the new custom router base, I'm gonna make a tray for that to slide in. Glue and brads are all I'm using to attach this. I make my marks, I bring the piece over to the crosscut sled, cut the pieces just like so, and attach them to the ends. Okay, you see that? There's eight holes in the router base now, not four. I had to go back and drill extra holes to orient the router the correct way on the tray. So anyway, that being said, paste wax is all you need to kind of limit the friction on this. And as you can see here, it's sliding pretty well. Okay, now it's time to cut a channel into the tray that's gonna allow us to cut through this to flatten out some slabs. I simply use a straight bit, half of an inch in diameter. I lower it bit by bit, pun intended I suppose, until we break through, which we've done right here. And now, let's try it out on a slab. So why not go ahead and give it its maiden voyage on a six foot by two and a half foot slab of cedar and honestly, I was a little nervous doing this. However, it worked great. I was able to move the actual tracks forward to accommodate more length in the slab and everything worked out perfectly. At this point, I've flipped the slab over and I do wanna say one thing. The slab is supported only by friction and shims. I've shimmed it up to be a little bit level and then the weight of the slab itself is all that was needed to keep it in place. There was no movement whatsoever as I made these passes with the router. If you're working with a smaller slab, hot glue is recommended to put in between the work surface and the slab to keep it from moving. And as you can see here, I'm doing a little bit of sanding, putting little mineral spirits on it to bring out the color, and it is absolutely gorgeous. At this point, I'm gonna invite you to subscribe because this piece of wood is gonna become my new massive desk, and that should be a fun project here in the future. So why did I make this router sled adjustable in height? Well, occasionally you're gonna come across pieces like this. This is a massive offcut of a tree that was cut down in our neighborhood. I'm gonna clean it up with a wire brush and a belt sander real quick before I make any passes on it. However, I'm raising this sled to capacity and then I lower it bit by bit, as you can see here with these spacer blocks. I repeat this process about three times, lowering it incrementally with these spacer blocks. And the desired result at the very end is a true and level surface on both sides of a massive piece of wood because you have an adjustable router sled. When you're all done with it, put it aside for the next time and you're good to go. Well, that about does it this week, guys. I appreciate you being here for the ride. Also, I am not an expert in anything slab related. I am just now getting into this, but I needed a way to flatten these things out. I don't have big industrial machines to do that. So this little knockdown sled, it worked out great for me. And also this slab you see here is gonna be for a desk in an upcoming video. At this point, there is no sponsor for this video, but I do wanna thank my Patreon supporters. I am actually unbelievably humbled that you guys wanna donate to us and our cause, what we do here to Glimpse Inside. And if it's for you, I'm gonna put a link down below. 
if you're interested. Also, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Always, we invite you to subscribe, and then there's going to be a few more videos over here to watch as well. Guys, thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode.